Hi, my name is Anne. Thank you for coming to my channel. A couple days ago, I booked a cheap flight to Barcelona and I am so excited to go back again, even though I was just there a year ago because Barcelona is one of my favorite cities in the world. I thought I would do a video on how I found this cheap airfare, how I decided where I was going to go and what are the pros and cons of the kind of airfare that I purchased. I will show screenshots of the website that I used and go through how I went through with booking this flight. So in my schedule, I identified a week at the end of January that I could take a couple of personal days and get a full week away and I wanted to go somewhere and I really didn't care where. I figured it would probably be Europe just because of the, the likelihood of there being flights in the price range that I would want to be in. And I started by using Google Flights. I check Google Flights on a regular basis. And I'm always looking to see if there's going to be some cheap fare out there. So what I did is I went to Google Flights and I put in my home airport and I left the destination blank, or sometimes people say put anywhere in there, but I just leave it blank. I put in the dates that I was available and then searched. When you do that, what comes up is a map that shows the price of flights all over the world that you can go on those dates. And there's filters you can use. I did end up using filters to bring down the price I was looking for. And I wanted to fly on Delta or a partner airline because I have a Delta branded credit card and I figured that would be the best bet for me. Plus with Delta, I do not have to fly through Chicago O'Hare. I don't know how many of you from the Midwest of the US are like me, but I try to avoid O'Hare and Delta doesn't go there from here. So I usually try to be on a Delta flight if I can. When I did this a couple of days ago when I booked my flight, there were more options in that low 430-ish dollar range. So I had a bunch of options that day. What it looks like as of today is Barcelona is for sure the cheapest option, but at the time there were several in that price range. And so the way I decided to go to Barcelona as opposed to another city, so for example, for me, Rome was the same price as Barcelona when I booked my flights. But Barcelona was the only destination that I could get to with only one stop. So that's why I chose Barcelona. So you click on the city that you want to go to, and then it will give you a place where you can see all of the flights that are available from your origin to your destination. And then above that, there is a link to a grid where you can check to see if any of the surrounding days might be cheaper. So as of right now, the days I picked were pretty much the same as all the days surrounding it, but every once in a while, you will see that if you leave a day on either side or come home on a day on either side of what you thought, the prices can sometimes be significantly different. So I always check that chart to see if there is a better price available. So for me, that was the rest price. So I just continued and then went through and booked from there. Eventually, you get a link to the actual airline website. And you always, in my opinion, want to book airfares on the airline's website as opposed to a third party provider website. Because if something goes wrong with your flight, the airline is going to be more likely to deal with you if you booked through them than if you booked with somebody else. And whoever that somebody else is may or may not be available to help you if something is happening as you're trying to fly. So I always book my flights through the airline, even if it might be a little bit more expensive to do so. It's just, it just feels safer to me to do that. I booked a flight level of basic economy. That is essentially the lowest tier that you can get on a major US airline. So you'll see that on American, United, Delta, major US airlines. It is a step below regular economy, which is what I would typically fly. And there are pros and cons to doing that. And it really depends on your personal preference and what you're willing to live with if you're going to use the basic economy. For me, I would only do basic economy on Delta because I have a branded credit card through them. So some of the things that you lose by booking basic economy, I get back because of the credit card. So what are the things that you lose by booking basic economy? 
Well, first, you do not get to pick your seat until you check in. So that really increases your chance of being in a middle seat. Some people might not care about that. It is not my favorite thing. I would never choose a middle seat, but I'll live with it if I have to and hope that there is an aisle or a window seat available when I check in. But if there's not, there's not. You also do not earn any miles. You can't upgrade. There's some of those sorts of benefits don't apply. I don't care about that. I don't fly enough that I'm ever gonna get status on an airline, so accumulating the miles doesn't matter. I'm probably not gonna get upgraded anyway. I certainly can't afford to upgrade. So that part isn't an issue to me. And then the last two things that you lose by booking basic economy are the things that I don't lose because of the credit card. One of them is you do not get to check a bag. So normally on an international flight, you get one free checked bag. With basic economy, you have to carry on only. I'm gonna do that anyway, so it doesn't much matter, but if I wanted to check a bag, I can because of my credit card. So let's say I go to Barcelona and I buy a bunch of stuff, I could check a bag coming home if I wanted to. And the last thing that happens when you buy basic economy is that you are going to be the last group to board the plane. I won't have to do that. I will still get main one, which is the first economy class group that boards because of my credit card. The one thing I wonder about, and I don't know the answer to, so if any of you do, please comment below and let me know. But if you don't get a free checked bag and you're in the last group to board, what happens if there's not room in the overhead bins for your bag by the time you get on the plane? Because normally what happens, they just check it for you. And I don't know if they would then charge you for that or if because you got to that point in the process, they would check it for free. I don't know. But for me, again, it doesn't matter. I get a free check bag anyway, so I'm not too concerned about that. So this will be my first time traveling on basic economy. The worst thing that'll happen potentially is that I end up in a middle seat for an eight hour flight. It's fine, I will live with it. I've been in a middle seat before on an international flight. It's not the most comfortable thing. I am five feet 11, so the leg room gets to be dicey, but I'll make it work. I am willing to do that for the price because otherwise I wouldn't be going at all. Now, as far as Google Flights goes, that is my preferred website. I'm pretty sure there are other websites that do that same thing where you can plug in your where you're starting and leave the destination blank and see what comes up. I've tried it on Skyscanner. I know a lot of people like that. I just like the interface on Google Flights better than Skyscanner. And there might be other websites that do that too. So if you know of any, if there's one that you like to use, you can comment on that so other people have the ability to try those out. And I'd like to try out some other ones too. So I'm super excited to go to Barcelona in January for a week. I am going by myself. I am planning on just taking it by ear as I get there, not planning a whole lot. Really just, if all I do is eat and shop, I will be happy. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informational. We'll see you in the next one.